to be filled with joy. In these days, in Jerusalem, people had many feelings, fear, amazement, doubt. In those days, while the healed cripple hot clung to Peter and John, all the people were astonished. There was not a tranquil environment because things were happening that were not understood. And the Lord went to his disciples. Even they knew that he had already risen. Even Peter knew it, because he had spoken privately with him that morning. The two that had returned from Iman knew it. But when the Lord appeared, they were frightened. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. They have the same experience on the lake, when Jesus came walking on the water towards them. But at that time, Peter had been courageous and placed his bed on the Lord, saying, But if it is you, bid me to walk on the water to you. But on this day, Peter was quiet. He had spoken with the Lord that morning, and nobody knows what they have said to each other in that dialogue, and so he remained silent. But they were so filled with fear, upset, the apostles thought that they were seeing a ghost. And Jesus said to them, Why are you so agitated? And why are these doubts rising in your hearts? Look at my hands and at my feet. Jesus lets them see his wounds. The treasure that Jesus took with him to heaven was him to show it to them and the Father to intercede for us. Touch me and see for yourselves. A ghost has no flesh, no bones. And then there's a phrase that gives me consolation. And for this reason, this passage of the gospel is a favorite. But they didn't believe for their joy. Again, and they were full of astonishment. The joy prevented them from believing. Their joy was so great that, no, this could not be true. This joy is not real. Oh, it's just just too much joy and this keeps them from believing this joy they were all filled both with joy and they're being paralyzed by the joy and joy is one of the desires that saint paul has for his community in rome may the god of hope fill you with all joy, he writes. To fill with joy and to be filled with joy. It is an experience of the greatest consolation. When the Lord makes us understand that, this is something different from being happy, positive or radiant. No, it is something very different. To be joyful, but filled with joy, an overflowing joy that really gets us. And this is why Paul wished the Romans, the God of hope, fill you with joy. That word, that expression, to fill with joy, is repeated many, many times. For example, what happened in the jail when Paul served, saved the life of the jailer who was about to commit suicide after the doors had been opened by the earthquake? And then he proclaims the gospel to the jailer. Paul baptizes him, and the jailer, the, the Bible says, was filled with joy for having believed. The same happens with the minister of economy of Candace. When Philip baptized him, 
he disappeared. He went on his way, filled with joy. And again, the same happened on the date of the Ascension. The disciples returned to Jerusalem, filled with joy. It is this, the fullness of consolation, the fullness of the Lord's presence. Because, as Paul says to the Galatians, joy is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. It is not the consequence of emotions that emerge because of something marvelous. No, it is something, something much more. This joy that fills us, it's a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Without the Spirit, we cannot have joy. To receive the joy of the Spirit is a grace. I am reminded of the last numbers, the last few paragraphs of Pope Paul the Sixth exhortations, when he speaks of joyful Christians, of joyful evangelizers, and not of those who are always down in the dumps. Today is a good day to read these paragraphs, filled with joy. But they didn't believe for joy. Their joy was so great that they did not believe. There is a passage in the book of Nehemiah that will help us today in this reflection on joy. The people after returning to Jerusalem, rediscovered the Book of Law. They rediscovered it again because they knew all the law by heart. They could not find the Book on Law before. They had a great feast, and all the people gathered together to listen to the priest Ezra reading from the Book of Law. This was one of our first readings about eight weeks ago. The people were so moved and they wept for joy because they had found the very book of the law and they wished. It was joyful, so weeping. In the end, when the priest Ezra finished, King Nehemiah said to the people, Be calm. Do not weep anymore. Preserve this joy because the joy in the Lord is your strength. This word from the book of Nehemiah will help us today. The great strength that we have to transform, to teach the gospel, to go forward as witnesses of life is the joy of the Lord, which is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Today, let us ask him to grant us this fruit and grace.